Good afternoon, everyone. Today we will continue some examples in Chapter Five, Section Two, the volumes. Then we will start the next section, the volumes by cylindrical shells method. So let's review a little bit from last time in the section two. The volumes, if we cut, if we cut some solid. And we get the cross section region or cross section area. If it's a circle, then we can figure out the circle's radius. Then the cross section area a x will be pi radius square. In that way, we can evaluate the volume, right? In that way, we can evaluate the volume. So, let me write the review formula. Uh, sorry, my pen is not working. Let me check a little bit. So let's review the volume formula we did in the previous examples. So if we know the cross section area A, which is either a x or a y, then that is the function, right? That is the function either about x or about y. Then we can figure out the radius, the radius of the cross sectional circle. Then we can work out the area pi radius square, and then we can evaluate the volume of the solid using the definite integral from a to b, a x dx in this way. So in those examples we discussed before, the cross section gives a circle, right? Gives a circle. So the area of the cross section is pi radius square. Now we will check two more examples: the the cross sectional region and not circle. Okay. Now let's check those two examples. Example four. The region R enclosed by the curves y equals x and y equals x square is rotated about the x-axis. Find the volume of the resulting solid. So first, we should draw the function curve. Okay. Two simple function curve y equals x and y equals x square. So let me draw x y equals x. That is the straight line y x x and the parabola y x x square, and it would be pretty easy to to check the intersection of those two will be zero and zero one one right will be two intersections at origin point zero zero and at the one one. So here the intersection is one one. So the region we need to figure out the region first. The region enclosed by the two curves. Okay, so that will be this part bounded by the lower bounded bottom bounded by the y equals x square. This is y equals x square, and then top bounded by the straight line y equals x. Now we are going to rotate this region about x-axis. Let me establish the x or y, and this region will rotate by x-axis. So we use this rotating notation. Okay, this rotation to to illustrate the we were rotating by this direction. Then we need to draw the solid first. Okay, we need to get the solid first if we rotate this part. Now let me draw by myself to show you the solid, how the how the solid looks like. So the solid will, uh, the outer part will bounded by the straight line, right? Will be bounded by the straight line, and then the inside will be bounded by the parabola. The inside will be bounded by the parabola, so rotate by x-axis. 
try to practice how to get the region and how to get the solid by yourself. Okay, practice the drawing by yourself in the in your notebook. So here is from zero to one again, right? The this intersection point is still one one. So the outer bound, the outer bound will be the straight line y x x, and the inner bound will be the parabola. And of course, of course, here here if we cut, okay, if we cut at some position. So for x, x is between zero and one, right? X is between zero and one. So if you cut. I should change the color. Okay, let me change the color. If you cut at some position x, at some point x, so can you tell me what does this shape looks like? What does the cross section shape looks like? So here you will notice that the outer, this solid, the outer part, the outer part is bounded by the straight line, but the inner part is bounded by the by the uh, parabola, so it looks like a trumplet, but it's not the actual trumplet we 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 did before because the in the inside part is empty, right? It's empty. So here, if you cut at some point x, check this blue one, check this blue one. This part, this part is empty. This part is empty. Only this part, right? So if you're looking at this one, if you're looking at this part, the shape from the positive view of x-axis, how it looks like? Is it a circle again? So what does what does the cross-section region looks like? Is it a circle again? Actually, it would be a ring. Okay, it would be a ring and the center is at the x axis. So the shaded part actually is only the the ring, okay? It's only the ring. The cross section cross sectional region looks like in this way. And we need to figure out how can we find the area of this ring? Of course, it would be the outer circle's area minus the inner circle's area, right? So everyone, follow me. Can everyone follow me? This at some point x between zero and one, then we will get uh, the cross-sectional region shows a circle, uh, shows a ring instead of a circle, and we need to figure out the cross-section area AX again, so that is the area of this ring. Okay, so the area of this ring will be outer circle's area minus the inner circle's area. And let me show you the graph, okay? It will be more specific here. So you will get the you will get the pink the, the pink one, okay? The pink one. Actually it forms this piece of solid this this slide, okay, this piece of solid that gives you a washer actually. It's a washer. So you will notice that here this one gives the inner uh, circles radius. This one gives the inner circles radius. And this one is the in outer circles radius. So what is the inner circle radius? Inner Radius. So you will notice that the inner radius actually is the point on the parabola, right? It's a point on the parabola. So when here, this point is x. So the y value, the y value, the corresponding y y value gives the inner radius, which is when when this point, when the x value gives x, then on the parabola, the y value should be x squared. Then what is the outer radius? The outer radius, when when we have the value x here, then the y value, the y value gives the outer radius, which is on the straight line, right? It's the same here. It's the same in the positive part of x-axis. So it's x. So that is what we showed here, okay? That is what we showed here, the 
outer radius is x, the inner radius is x squared, then in that way it will it will be pretty easy to to write the cross section area ax, right? Out, outer circles area minus the inner inner circles area. So let me write the statement, okay? Let me write the statement. So at the point x At the point x, what is my x? My x is between 0 and 1. Then the cross-sectional region and the, the solid and the cross-sectional region are shown, right? So the cross-sectional shape shows a circle. Uh, sorry, shows a rain. Okay, sorry, shows a rain. And with the inner radius x square, how can we get x square? You should check those two functions, right? Those two functions because the inner, the inner part, the inner bounded by the parabola. So with inner radius x square and outer radius x, how we get the x? because it's on the straight line y equals x. So with outer radius x, then the area, the area of the cross section ax we can figure out the ax first, then we can evaluate the volume of this solid. Then the area of the cross section is ax that will be outer circle, outer circle area minus inner circle area and the former is much easier, right? It's much easier to write it. So the Outer circle radius will be radius square, right? Will be radius square. Outer radius is x, so it would be pi x square. And then minus inner circles radius square. Inner circles radius is x square. So that is the cross section area. Then we can find the volume with the definite integral from a to b, that is from 0 to 1, ax is pi x squared minus pi x to the 4 dx. Then it will be, it will be much easy to find the antiderivative for this polynomial, right? You can shift the constant pi outside and then evaluate it at 0 and 1, take the difference. So here, in example four, in example four, the cross-sectional shape is not a circle again. Okay, it's not a circle again. And try to understand how we get those rotating solid. Here we rotate about the x-axis, right? Rotate about the x-axis to get this solid. How we get this rotating solid? The the question tell us we we get the region in two dimension first enclosed by the y equals, y equals x, y equals x squared. So we get this small region, and then rotate by x-axis, we get this solid. If we rotate about some other axis, then the solid will be different. Of course, the volume will be different. So everyone is clear? Then, then let's check the solution, okay? Let's check the solution. Let's read it. Okay, let's read it. The the curves y equals x and y equals x square intersect at the point zero zero and one one. No problem. Pretty easy to solve the intersection. The region below them, the solid of rotation and the cross section perpendicular to the x axis. That means we we use a knife to cut the solid perpendicular to x axis. So if we cut if we cut the solid perpendicular to x-axis, that means we use the x as a variable. 
if we cut, if we use a knife to cut the solid perpendicular to the y-axis, that means we will use y to, to evaluate the volume. So a cross-section in the plane Px and has the shape of washer, right? Has the shape of washer, or we call it an annular ring with inner radius and outer radius. So we can figure out the the so the cross-section area by subtracting the area of inner circle from the area of the outer circle, right? So that is the area of the cross-section. Then we can evaluate the volume. And finally, the, the answer is 2 pi over 15. So in this section, when we, when we discuss the volume, the volume always gives a non-negative number, which is different from the, the net area we discussed before. So volume will always be a non-negative number. And try to understand this ring, okay? This cross-sectional region ring, how we get it. So that is example four. Now we will we will check one more example. We just change the rotating axis based on this example, okay? Based on this region, based on this region, we will change the rotating axis. And then we will see how the solid we obtain and figure out the volume. So number example five, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region in example four about the line y equals two. So it will be the same region, okay? It will be the same region as we did in the example four. And the rotating axis change, okay, the rotating axis change. Let me show you the region again, okay. Let me show you the region again. So the parabola and the straight line. Here is one. Here is one again. X, O, Y axis and this region, right? This region enclosed by y equals x, y equals x squared. And then what is my rotating axis? So we're by rotating the region about the line y equals 2, y equals 2 actually gives a horizontal line, which means the function is a constant, right? We can tell this is a constant. This is 2 when y value is 2. So this line gives y equals 2. So we are going to rotate rotate this region by y equals 2. So rotate about this horizontal line. And then let me show you what, what the solid we obtain. Okay, try to practice your hand drawing in the notebook. And I will zoom out this region. X, O, Y. Let me zoom out this region. So here is one. Here is one. This horizontal line will be Y equals two. y equals 2. This region, so the distance for this point to, to the horizontal line will be 1, right? Will be 1. So we will rotate it, which means it will be symmetric, okay? Symmetric. So let me move, let me extend in my y axis, okay? Let me extend in my y-axis a little bit. So this part, okay, this part will flip here. And it's a solid, okay? It's a solid.
how the solid looks like. You can imagine that, okay? You can imagine that how the solid looks like. I will say it looks like a um, cover, okay? It's a cover of a coffee cup. Coffee cup, rotating by this one. I will say this one looks like a cover, okay? A cover of the cup. Of a water cup or coffee cup, it doesn't matter. A cover, a cover of the cup, but looks like a cover. Okay, looks like a cover of the cup, but this part is empty. This part is empty, which means there is a hole. Okay, there is a hole, and this part is also empty. So with the the cup, it's like a cup cover of the cup but without the uh, bottom without the bottom and bottom and the top without the both bottom and top side if you rotate if you, you rotate this solid by uh, by 90 degree looks like a cover okay try to imagine okay mm, or, or try to understand okay try to understand those so we will we will notice that it's still here is one right for x so you can still use the knife use the knife to cut to cut this solid at some point x and then and then you cut it you will get a cross section now we need to figure out how the cross section looks like okay how the cross section looks like i'm going to use a purple color purple color to show this is a cross section, and of course, as I said, the blue the blue color showed it's empty. So some part in the middle, some part in the middle is empty, and this solid inner side, this cover, the inner side, inner part is bounded by y equals x, the straight line, and the outer part is bounded by the parabola y equals x square, right? So the cross section region actually is it's the same looks like a ring okay if you look at this we cut we cut at the position x with this purple color then you will notice that it's still a ring okay it's still a ring and the center of this ring will will located at the horizontal line y equals two it's still still a ring because you have this part you have this part and this part. So it shows the ring and the center of the ring is located at y equals to this line, okay, this line. Then we need to figure out the inner radius and the outer radius. The cross-section area will be the area of inner circle subtracted from the outer circle right so we need to figure out the inner radius and outer radius let's check this graph okay let's check this graph so so here it the the pink one the pink the pink the pink slab shows the washer okay shows the washer so you will notice that you will notice that the center of this ring is located at the y equals 2 and what is the inner radius this part shows the inner radius right this part gives the inner radius inner radius and as we mentioned before what is the function what is the function for the inner part this is the straight line right this is a straight line so when we have when we have the x okay and of course it's the same here right it's the same let me let me let me just draw another one okay let me just draw another one to avoid to avoid any extra confusion for students so what is the inner circle radius here we know the radius the the center of the ring is located at the horizontal line y equals 2 
So this part, this part will gives the inner radius, right? This part is the inner radius. And what is this straight line here? What is the point here? This point will be the inner bound of this solid, which is the straight line. So this part will be y equals x. This part is the same as the x here, right? As the x here. This is x. So what is the inner radius? The inner radius will be 2 minus x, right? Because here, the whole distance from this horizontal x-axis to this horizontal line is 2. So this part is, this height is x. That is, uh, that is the point on the y equals x on this straight line. So the inner radius will be the x subtracted from 2. So that's why we get 2 minus x, which is the inner radius. Okay? inner radius now let's figure out next let's figure out the outer radius okay let's figure out the outer radius let me use a different color okay let me use a different color what is the outer radius so the outer radius will be this one right this one so this is in brown color gives the outer radius and we know the distance between the horizontal line and the uh, x-axis is 2 so what is this one what is this little height this little height actually is x squared because this solid is outer bounded by the y e by the parabola y equals x squared so the outer radius will be will be the little height x squared subtracted from one. So this part gives the outer radius. Okay, two minus x squared gives the outer radius. Now, after we figure out the inner and outer radius for this ring for this cross section shape, then it will be much easier to to find the area of the cross section, right? It will be much easier. Now we can still write at the point, we will still use x. At the point x, my x is between 0 and 1 again, right? Between x, between 0 and 1 because the intersection of this region. So the shape of the cross section the shape of the cross section is the circle uh, sorry it's a ring okay it's a ring with outer radius outer radius will be 2 minus x squared and the inner radius will be 2 minus x uh, I know my notes uh, looks like a little mess with different colors but I just tried my best to, to to show you how the solid looks like, okay? So, a ring with outer radius 2 minus x squared and the inner radius is 2 minus x. Then the area of the cross section ax, the area of the cross section is pi outer circle radius 2 minus x square radius square minus pi inner radius 2 minus x is the radius square right and then we can evaluate the volume what are the lower and the upper limit so 
for x again, right? For x again, how can you check the lower and upper limit starting from the region, right? From the region, this this piece of region rotating about the y equals two, and then you get you obtain the solid. So it's still from zero to one. Then a x so will be pi outer radius double square. Okay, be careful. We have two square here, and then minus pi inner radius square d x. And if you expanded the cross section area function, that is still a polynomial of x, so it will be easy to to find the antiderivative and then evaluate the definite integral. So there is no problem. The important part is the cross section region still gives a ring. What are the Radius. What are those inner and outer radius? And example five are more complicated than example four. Example four, or or like the previous example, we always rotate the region about either x-axis or y-axis. That will be much easy. And this example shows we can rotate about any horizontal or or vertical line. Then that becomes more complicated to check the radius. So that that's why I always said the cross section area. It's not always pi x square, right? Even it's a circle. Even it's a circle. It's not always pi x square. You need to figure out the radius as well as the inner and outer radius. Now let's check the solution. Okay. The cross section area will be pi outer radius square, pi. Minus pi in the radial square. So the volume of S will be the volume from zero to one a x. Here I miss the d x term, right? I miss this d x term. And if you expanded this, that will be a polynomial about x. Then find the antiderivative from zero to one. That gives eight pi over fifteen. That is the solid. Okay, that is the solid of the volume of this solid. So that's example five. Now we are going to summarize example one, two, three, which the cross section shape is a circle, and example four and five, the cross section is a ring. The volume of the of the solid S, the volumes of the solid S, we can either use x or y. Right? It doesn't matter which one is more convenient. We will choose that one. If the cross section is a disk, that is the circle we call, it, then we find the radius of the disk in terms of x or y. Then the area of the cross section will be pi radius square. That is example one, two, three we discussed last time. And if the cross section is a washer. As the example four and five we discussed today, then that will be pi outer radius square minus pi inner radius square, which gives the area of the ring. So that is the cross section area. Then it will be much easier to evaluate the volume. So that is the summary of section two. Okay, of section two. Ah,、uh, it's almost time. Let's take a five minutes break.